So we're here with the immortal Matt Brown. Matt, how, are, how excited are you to be fighting here in Toronto this week? I'm excited to be fighting anywhere, anytime. So today, this week, yeah, you'd say it's just another week, but happened to be, uh, I think it's going to be a glorious week. And you're going up against a former friend and former training partners of yours. Not a friend. Not a friend? No, never been a friend, no. So, but you guys trained together at one point. You know each other's style quite well, right? No, I've trained with him one, maybe two times. So. Really? Yeah. Right. yeah. What fight do you like better, this one or the original match against Safi? That was supposed to be. Uh, it, it is, you know, fight to fight, man. I like being in there with another guy on the other side of me, so that's what makes me happy. Matt, can you just tell us a bit about uh, working with Dwayne, how this uh, relationship came together, and just the chemistry the two of you have had in this camp? Yeah, Dwayne's great, man. You know, uh, for uh, me and him, we always thought we said, man, you know, I respect coaches that, that are five, you know, and that's a big uh, pet peeve of mine, you know, and he's been there with the best, and he's obviously one of the best at what he does, and you know, he brings a lot of things to my game that um, I wasn't really implementing and never was really taught to implement. So, you know, more MMA style and, and not, uh, I think maybe I get a little carried away with like doing more traditional pure Muay Thai. And he's bringing more of an MMA striking element to it and um, adding a lot to my game. And how much does it help having uh, the coaching staff you do that has worked with Cerrone before? Do you feel like that gives you an advantage heading into this fight? No, I don't think it makes a difference. I mean, you know, a lot of people, maybe some people might have a mental advantage in that aspect or whatever, but, you know, there, there ain't no secrets in this game, and there ain't no secrets in what Cerrone does, and there ain't no secrets in what I do. So we're going to go in there and go to battle either way. So, you know, once that bell rings, it's the same shit. But you've had uh, issues with a coach in Brazil when you actually had an altercation with a coach. Yeah. How hard is it to find the right staff and the right people to be on your team? Extremely hard, and, you know, now I'm... I feel like, you know, over the years, man, I've been through a lot of coaches and dealt with a lot of scumbags and a lot of, you know, crappy people. And I'm I'm confident now, man, I got a, a good system and good coaches. And, and now it's just a matter of time, you know, putting it all together. And the longer we're together, the better it's going to be. Considering how the past few fights have gone, is there more pressure on yourself to, you know, you can't have another loss in the street? Or is it you got to win, you're right back to where you were before? Uh, yeah, that's it. It's easy to to look at you know the past and and be like, man, I have to win this fight or whatever. But you know what? Honestly, I ain't even looking at it like that, man. I, you know, this is, I'm enjoying this ride. I, I'm here. Uh, I'm having fun. Like you know, even talking to all you guys, man. Like who thought I would be here? You know what I mean? So I, I'm happy as shit, and I'm gonna go in there and give it everything I got and, and put a beating on this guy. And you have a huge opportunity here because you know Cerrone's on a big winning streak right now. If you get a win here, people are gonna forget about that, and you know that, that's a big win for you. You're kind of looking at it that way. Yeah, so you could look at it that way, but you know, for me, you know, I ain't never fought before and I ain't fighting again after. You know, this is the only fight in the world that matters and you know, December 11th, we'll figure out where we go from there. But right now, man, I got 110% focus on Saturday night and and just putting a beating on this guy. Do you put any like extra thought into, have you seen like the photos of his eye and stuff, what's going on there? Like, is that a target to you or what do you make of that one thing? I see irrelevant to me. I mean, I, yeah, I see people call me, tell me, you know, he's, got a bad eye, I mean, whatever, I'm going to punch him in his eye, whether it's bad or good, you, you know, so I, I may I'll make it worse, but, you know, it, it's pretty much irrelevant. Who are some of your main training partners out in Colorado that you've been working with ahead of this matchup? Uh, Brandon Thatch was probably one of my, my main sparring partners. Uh, I mean, you know, always training partners, there's always a lot of guys nobody ever heard of, right? So, uh, you know, in terms of guys that you heard of, I mean, like Neil's got his own fight coming up, Neil Magny, you know, with Hendrix, so, you know, he, we're kind of going up against different styles, so... Didn't we train? I mean, we always trained together, but uh, we didn't get a whole lot of work in. Uh, Drew Dober's fighting tomorrow, yeah. uh, uh, Saturday. Um, so me and him, you know, we put in some work together and you know, talk about how we're doing things and um, work, work together a lot. Uh, but I say, you know, for sparring, like Brandon Thatch is probably one of the most helpful guys, man. He's so good, you know, uh, man, such a such a, a talent. And uh, uh, I mean, you know, GSP had him out for his camps before. I mean, you know, he's such a uh, talent. And, and a tall, lanky guy, too, kind of like Cerrone. Yeah, Does yeah. that help as, you know, as far as him mimicking Cerrone? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's it. Yeah, yeah. He's he's really good at mimicking other guys, man. He, he's such a talent. I mean, he, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about him. I think, uh, you know, if he, if he gets his head together and, and puts in the right work, he's going he's gonna to be right up at the top with all of us. Your thoughts on the main event for this card? Who do you think leaves with that interim title? How does Cerrone hold it? 
Yeah, I don't really have a pick, man. I like both the guys, uh, and I hope I don't want to see a winner or loser in that fight, to be honest. I, I like both of them too much. So you've, you've been on the road so far this year. How, how do the Toronto fans stack up to the Brazilian fans? <laughs> well, they're, so far, uh, way better. <laughs> so far, so good. But I tell you what, man, I, I like going to Brazil, and I like have a feeling that that's the first time I've ever been booed in my life. That's the first time I've ever, you know, been treated that way in my life. So, you know, to be honest, man, it fired me up, made me feel good, and and it was uh, it was kind of motivating, really. Um, you know, still, you know, Damian Maia was still too good for me that night, but, um, you know, I, I was perfectly cool with it, and it's a mem memorable experience. You're happy to be fighting in Canada. 35 career fights, first fight in Canada. It's, it's about time right Yeah, actually, uh, first time, yeah. Yeah, first time in Canada. I don't yeah, well, you, I know you've been there, you know, as a, like, I know you were at 115, I think, way back in the uh, day. Yeah, in yeah. Vancouver, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, uh, first true, time yeah. in Toronto, too, biggest city in Canada, I mean, it must be pretty exciting. Well, the only other time I was in Canada, I went to jail, so I was, okay. like, so I was lucky they even let me over Tell here. Tell us that so. story, please. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a long story, but uh, I think yeah. it's, it's a pretty cool story, though. I think it was uh, me and my wife were getting married in Vermont, so we were driving from Ohio to Vermont. We stopped by Niagara Falls, put GPS in, uh, Niagara Falls in GPS, Get to the border, you can't turn back around because we, we didn't even have our passports. We weren't trying to go to Canada. Get to the border, we can't get turned around. But we get there and ask if we had any guns. I said no. And they searched the car, had two guns because, you know, I'm going to Vermont, you know what I mean, with the hillbillies up there, you know. So we're going to go shoot, um, and, you know, travel across the country, you know, try to protect my family and everything, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I got charged with lying to customs, uh, 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 international smuggling of firearms. So I went to jail for a few days and then got out and got married the next day. I got out of jail. Um, yeah, I didn't really get to tell the story much, cause, but now it's all, it's an absolute discharge. Everything's completely washed. I don't have it on my record anymore. Um, you know, but I, I, it, I was questioning whether they would let me come here or not. Uh, but they, yeah, they let me in and, and there's no problem now. But it's a pretty cool story and there's a lot more to it than just that. But I got to sum it up as quick as I can. But, uh, that's now a you know your shotgun wedding. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. And now you know you can trust your wife because she married you after that. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. I like to tell her I went from one jail to another. <laughs> you were, you were quick Don't print that. <laughs> you were quick to say that you had gotten a lot of friends. Uh, he said he tried to say hi to you yesterday and gave him a cold shoulder. Is there anything more to that? Is that you do not like it? Well, I didn't see him yesterday, so. Uh, but I will give him a cold shoulder. I haven't. I would. I mean, I've talked to him before. That doesn't make him a friend. So uh, I don't care for him. I don't care for his personality. Um, even when I talked to him, I didn't really want to talk to him. I was just being cordial. So yeah, I don't have any uh, good feelings towards him at all. I don't like the way he acts. I don't like the way he carries himself, and I don't like the way he represents the sport. Is there so, any example of that? Like something, something in particular you don't? Like? I mean, you just his personality. You can see, you know, the way he talks. Like I think he's, a, you know, he wants to be an alpha male, and he really wants to portray as he's, uh, you know, something special, and. Uh, you know, I think it's all these yes men he's got around him, you know, I think he's just being lied to by them, telling him, you know, oh, Donald, you're the champion, man, you're so good, you know, and you're so great, you're gonna be this and that, and really it's just, you know, he's just being lied to, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's my job to come in there and expose that truth out of him. You ever have these type of feelings towards an opponent? Like, where is that stuck up? No, not really, because, you know, I, I, most of my opponents, uh, you know, I'm really respectful to, and I think they're respectful to me, but, but I take, you know, I don't know if he means it or not. I don't know. Maybe he's just a, a douchebag of a person. But you know, I, I get that feeling. You know, when he's uh, talking to other people, especially other fighters, you know, he's a, you know, he feels like he's above uh, other people and like he's kind of a bully. You know what I mean? And then, you know, you watch his fights where he losses, where he got bullied back, and he don't like that. So, you know, that's what I got to do to him. And uh, you know, like I said, I, I just think it, you know his whole thing is all just based on lies. You know, and a lot of people fall into that, but I ain't falling into it. You're not easy to get a bully either. No, I won't be bullied. I will not. Thank you, Matt. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it.